Hello there, my name is Ref, and today I bring you another Unhide tutorial and we're gonna be working on our werewolf model. So now things are about to get serious. So to catch up from where we left it, oops, I'm having feedback, not anymore. So we're gonna go and to just to remember where we left this thing from, let me show you guys back to our image. So basically before we're posing this big blocking that we had here so it's just like the big graphical masses from our werewolf just trying to find the best way to fit our original design so we basically posed what we had blocked out and we made two variations one of them that resembled more what we had before and another one that had a few variations we talk about how this one was better and also made a paint over over it so this leaves us in a point where we're looking at this and we are starting to have a feeling of how this is gonna look like in the end so we added a few things to make sure we have a, a better understanding of what's happening because when you see it without any paint over it just looks a bit dry but it's enough for us to visualize the next step so now that we know what's happening here it's time to open ZBrush and import the changes we made here because have a look at this that's what we have we have this model here that was imported from ZBrush and we started playing with its parts so let me close this file it's not the one we're looking for that's the one so we imported that from ZBrush as a FBX model and started to play with these parts so I want to have looking this way or the other way so we kept playing with it until we had that final render that we started to paint in Photoshop so what we need to do now is get this thing that we changed because when it actually came from ZBrush it wasn't like this that was the original pose so we worked on another one and changed into this thing so now you can see how different they are right so what I need to do is bring this back to ZBrush so I know for sure where things are and then I'll keep working from there because we know that this pose is gonna work under our camera view alright so uh, let's send this guy back again but there's a little tricky thing that we need to remember this new guy when we brought it over it was very small like the scale between ZBrush and Cinema 4D wasn't alright and that's something that's very common you end up having this thing when you send uh, a model from a program to another program and their scales do not match and somehow you end up having this weird thing where you send it to another program and then it gets tiny and when you send back the proportions are different you know it just looks really small so in order to fix this thing we went here to in inside Cinema 4D and we changed the scene scale so we had something that was 1 and I said okay my target is gonna be 100 just so I multiplied the size to 100 and I made it a lot bigger so cool we could work on it but then that leaves us with a problem because after working on this whoops where did that go oh here we go so after doing this uh, after doing this what we're gonna need is to scale that back to the same size it came here so I'm not gonna have any mismatch when I get back to ZBrush let me show you how this works so this is the new pose I'm gonna hit copy control C and create a new document and I am going to paste it there I know that I scaled this guy a hundred times bigger when I, it came in so what I need to do is actually shrink it by a hundred times so current scale is one I want to say this guy is going to be 0 0.01 final scale. Hit OK. And look, now it's tiny again. So I can go here to File, Export, and Export FBX. And this guy came in as Werewolf Proxy Z218. I'm going to export it again as Z218 reshaped. So I know I reposed it in Cinema 4D. Boom. Let's hit Save so it's a FBX the same way as we imported and now I'm gonna go straight up to ZBrush and let's load our old werewolf and our new werewolf so CG ZBrush I think it was 17 so that was the latest werewolf we were working on edit here we go 
that was the pose we got ready and exported that's pretty cool and now let's go there and through the same way we export it we're going to import which is through the FBX import export just because having exported as FBX is better in my opinion as it preserves all the sub to uh, uh, grouping so let's go to FBX import and bring our Wolfie CG models werewolf proxy reshaped the one we just saved and bang here it is we have it there with all the sub tools separated that's pretty good so let's see if this thing really matches what we had before I'm gonna go here and say merge uh, visible so this is going to create another sub tool that has all of the sub tools as one that's gonna make it easier to import over my older werewolf so let's go here and append and I am going to append the one that I just merged bang it fits perfectly you see now I have my original werewolf that we were modeling before we actually left and made a, a file to send to Cinema 4D and we have another one that's the one we posed in Cinema 4D but they are a perfect match so you won't have to go scaling and moving you know when that happens right you export something and then you're trying to match it again and scale is not right so you end up having to scale and eyeball it so that kinda sucks it's a lot better when things just fit in place pretty good so after this point it's time for us to start thinking about actual modeling let's fix this guy because we know it's gonna look awesome when it fits the camera so let's go here Pretty good. Uh, let's go and start modeling this guy. Let me think of which pieces I'm gonna keep. You know, looking at this guy, I think we can go and use the pieces we exported because there's not anything regarding resolution that I wanna keep. And pieces are separate anyway, so I'm not gonna import it to my older file. I'm gonna work basically on this and I'm going to import my wall object because that's the only thing we're missing here right so let's go and append I'm gonna go to m my original werewolf and there's this plane so I'm gonna make a polymesh 3d so I have this plane as a single tool hit my werewolf that I imported from ZBrush and we'll go for append plane boom now we got it all plane is right pose is right we just need to model let me change my material so I can see this a little bit better I think it's better to go this way than having that crazy red that ZBrush sets as default and let's save this guy so we don't have to do it all over again if you have a crash CG ZBrush werewolf 18 I'm gonna give a bit more info on this I'm gonna call it reshaped or reposed or whatever you want to call so yeah we made a few tweaks here first things first obviously <laughs> you see that the neck's not working with the head that's because we are changing the head in a way that it looked cool towards camera but we didn't really care about what was happening behind so let's go and start fixing this thing I'm gonna go with my move tool and you'll notice with time that all that I use really really is move clay build up uh, inflate and then standard of course I end up using a snake hook sometimes or things like this but it, it's like 80% of what I do is using these tools so let's go move let's do it in a way that it's kind of possible regarding anatomy and now for the first time I keep talking about anatomy but the, for the first time we'll have a proper look at how anatomy works and if things are actually respecting that many times we won't respect it but we need to make make sure it looks like it could exist you know here we go this is a bit better you see just fudging things in place works uh, another big thing 
that we know we need to change because look we have a map that's the whole reason to start with that's why we made sure it went out of ZBrush just so we could pose it we could find a nice camera to work with and paint some detail so what are the first things you notice here leg is different shoulder is different and other than this we're getting to smaller details so that's a good thing now we always have this notion that we need to work from the biggest shapes to the smaller shapes so we won't have a lot of trouble there okay uh, just so we know what we're doing and we don't lose track it's good to keep organizing what we're doing so now we're going to work on this and this and after we're done let's see what's the next thing we need to work on this looks obvious right it's way too far out and it's not really natural the reason why this was working before is because we had a werewolf that was standing uh, this part came to be shaped up at a, at a very early stage about here it ended up changing a little bit but this makes sense when you're walking on four legs now that he's there and he's bending the arm more like a human we're gonna end up having this part a bit more like a actual uh, human part so let's definitely decrease the length here And this starts to work a lot better already something that we need to have a careful look is like how the neck and the chest arrange themselves here I'll probably bring the chest the chest a bit higher so it's probably gonna make more sense another thing you notice is that we don't we, we're now sculpting this without symmetry and that's kind of crazy there that's something that's gonna make people kind of lose time but they would only lose time if they were making a model for production or that means something that people would animate or rig now we're working on a model to look great to under a specific pose so the only way to make it look nice like this in production is actually having lots of morph maps and different displacements to make sure when you deform the mesh to be like this so these displacements go along with it and they make it look cool this would make this tutorial unpractical so we're going straight to the pose that we think is gonna work same thing here with this arm you gotta be careful here we go let's not go that far look how odd it is it's it this gotta connect better with the body so I'm gonna go for my move tool and I'm gonna move this in actually I don't even need that I'll straight up rotate this guy so drag it outwards and rotate it so it tucks in nicely here alongside the body same thing is real for the biceps here we go for our forearm the forearm is gonna change a little bit because we need to rest the hand on the floor and at this moment it's just a bit weird that's something that Kawe at Life Farm like we're talking about this design and he was like yeah but I don't like the hand I don't like what you did to the hand because here we just drew something quickly to have an idea of where the hand is gonna come but like I said hands are a bit tricky so I know that if I am within this this graphic mass you know I am within the the area that this hand is supposed to establish context with other parts in the image whatever I do to this hand here if the model looks alright it's gonna look alright it's not gonna mess with my composition or anything like this so you know now that we're talking about this hand let's rotate it so it looks a little bit better <laughs> let's go like this and rotate it like that move it cool when we're at the point of actually modeling this I am definitely gonna go and cut some corners because we have a pretty good base hand here in ZBrush and we'll make sure it fits nicely there and we'll change it to the way we like it cool we have it there time to change the leg 
the lag is a single sub tool so I'm thinking here how we're gonna change this probably by rotating this part so I'm gonna go to rotate in my transpose tool hit control shift click it why is it not working oh because it's all the same polygroup alright so let me change this and break it down into different polygroups I was trying to mask it by clicking it but it wasn't working so I'm gonna go to polygroups auto group and that of course ZBrush is gonna give a separate group by mesh continuity so if the meshes are not uh, if the meshes are not continuous if these vertexes do not share vertexes with these vertexes things will be alright so now I can just click the parts I want to move and ZBrush is going to automatically mask the rest. How do I stack the selection? I'll probably have to hide it first. So I want to rotate these two parts but I want to keep this in place so I'm going to go to my draw mode, control shift, click it, click it again so it's going to hide that part click it again with control shift held so it's gonna go this way now I can go control shift click and drag outside so I'm gonna invert my selection I'm going to paint this control shift click outside so reveals control click so I invert my mask it's many <laughs> steps just so I get to have all of these parts these two parts in a way that I can do this so yeah now I can play with these parts nicely Let's have a look at our visual. What we're trying to do here, we are trying to get our leg that is very, very stiff, very close to the body, and move it outwards where it would be somewhere around here. So that's cool. Uh, I want to keep this as the pivot point because that's where it connects to the rest of the leg. And I like how these parts are shaping up, so I don't want to move this. My pivot is going to be here and the end of my pivot is gonna be the knee so let's drag it from here to the kneecap and then we can use this little sphere here to move it towards us or towards outside of the body that's a pretty good tool I love the way this works so let's change it it would make sense about here wouldn't it of course it's not connecting in the back but look now this makes more sense I think that's cool roughly speaking it's fitting in a nice place I'm gonna go and hit W so I go for my move tool and now let me drag this a bit lower back to my move tool and let's start fixing this guy let's move move it a bit here a bit here it's pretty cool uh, I want to move this part closer to the body and I want to move this part outwards so control shift click Bef actually before that let me lose my masking let me paint that invert my selection and move it outwards awesome same thing on the other side now this guy paint it invert it there's no right or wrong on this it's just like the base is here the base thought is that we're trying to shift things in place to make sure they work here we go this works a bit better you see how odd this is here we can definitely as we're going around just fix things here and there these lives are something new to me like how, how many people watching now we have 97 people that's pretty awesome so I'm just bombing information here if you guys wanna know something or if you have a specific question about anything that I'm doing here please just let me know and I'll be happy to just come here and reply I'm just not sure if I'm seeing the post live like is there any comment there I don't think that is anyways Can anybody, can anybody comment anything so I know this thing is working? 
if Facebook's not lying, we have 102 people looking at this, but no comments. So I'll just keep working here. Move this thing, make sure it's kind of all right. By the way, it joins. Oh, so it's working. Thank you so much. Cool. So lag is working now. I think I like it better. If we go and have a quick look from this perspective, remember that the camera that we'll have there is something about here. This lag here now looks a lot better than what we used to have. That's this thing. I was losing a lot of silhouette detail here and boom, now it looks so much better. So cool stuff. Fix it here. The shapes are better. Making sure it looks round and nice from each every direction. All right. Next thing. So you got the handle off the leg. This is working fine. Now let's go and start masking what we got done done let's fix the shoulder actually I think the shoulder was the first thing we did so it's looking a lot better already we definitely need hands in place tail is gonna be done by fur when we get to this part so yeah I think now we can jump now that we have things in place we can jump to the most important parts of the image which will be for sure and I think you guys are going to agree with me on this, is the head. So all the drama is going to be here. How this guy looks angry. We probably can not model a lot of different things here. Like, you know, you can show the teeth better. You can have uh, maybe crazy eyes, like having the eyes a bit more wide open. Stuff that's going to have more impact in the image. And, of course, hands. Hands are very expressive, and they they're gonna bring us a lot of information of how the pose is gonna look like and how you know all the expression from the beast is there so I'm gonna start these things now remember to talk about the hand I think we got there so to work on hands first things first I'm gonna get this guy here and hide it so we just have a stub same thing for this one we don't necessarily need these maybe to compare the sizes with the hand I'm gonna get in here let me go and append a ring and after I pen this ring let me go and check my light box brush or I think it's two. Yeah, it's actually two. And let's, where is our hand? You know, ZBrush folks, there is a hand here somewhere. I think it's, it could be project. Yeah, mannequin, project mannequin, and here's the hand. As soon as I pop that open, it's gonna reload my project. So I don't wanna change that for now. So I'm gonna cancel. Let me save my werewolf for now just in case so I lose a specific Z tool I'm gonna save it as 19 let me go to another sub tool I think it's gonna replace this one or the plane not sure so I'm gonna go to lightbox project mannequin hand let's bring it in would you like to say no yeah ZBrush just goes and simply gets rid of all of the other things I had here because it's it's another project so it gets rid of the other projects I wish I could open this as a sub tool so I didn't need to lose all of the stuff I got organized there but that's okay so you see how amazing this is this is a very good basis to start working as a hand and of course you can change it you can reduce the number of fingers you can do stuff like this so let's go here and with our rotate tool we can start to pose this hand as we want isn't that great that's pretty cool so 
now we can start thinking of how this hand is going to behave when you have it in place. So let me go and bring back my werewolf. And two things, I'm not sure if I can append this hand here and keep modifying it or I need to modify it outside of my Z tool. Let's try it. I'm going to hit append and boom, bring the hand. And I can still add it. I didn't even need that Taurus. So good stuff. I'm going to delete that. Get this hand. It's on draw mode. And let's start changing it. I'm not sure if I can. Uh, how can I can how can I move this guy? It's cool because I can rotate and all of this, but I can't really scale. You won't scale like this. Hmm. I'm not so sure. Well, this is live, right? So that's kind of awkward because I don't know how to do something that I need to do here. Usually I would just, you know, pause the video and look for a solution, but I don't really have that time and it's crazy just to stop the thing. So what I can do, what I can do is I can go to my hand model and actually import the werewolf. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to delete this hand that I imported to this. I am going to hide my plane and I am going to merge visible for the werewolf. So now we have the single sub tool with all the werewolf parts. Now I'm going to go back to my hand and append my werewolf. All right. So this is a bit crazy. It's not the best workflow in the world and I'm pretty sure there's a better way to do so. But all that I'm doing here is trying to bring my werewolf together with the hand so we can see what we're doing. So I am going to scale this guy, make it bigger, just so it relates to the size of the hand. So something about here, right? And now, whoops. Something is not working. Even my move tool is a bit wonky. Have you ever seen this? Hmm. Move. Move is working. But I can't not get to move the whole thing somehow. It's kind of a bummer. So if I can't do that, we'll have to do something else. We'll have to go here and imagine how this hand is and start posing it as we want. So first things first, we'll do this because that's what it does, right? You see it comes like this and then it changes direction like this and then you have fingers not not this way I got it wrong it's this way we'll have all of that tension happening like this right so that's the pose I am looking for I think deformation can, oh, Mateus is saying that deformation can scale the hand. That's a pretty good way to do so. But now, now that we already done the opposite, we kind of got the werewolf back and scale that. It, it's kind of pointless, but that's a very good hint. I think scaling, it's pretty good. So, and, and Rachid, Rachid said select all bones. Select all bones, maybe that works, I don't know. So yeah, this thing here goes like the way we set it. 
and then we need to rotate it this way this goes like this it, it's a bummer that we're having trouble to scale that and of course I think what you got there was right Mateus I think if you would just scale that using deformation it would work but then it would be another problem to just keep rotating this and get all of the others to follow along but anyway uh, here we go this one goes like this look how expressive it gets really quickly I think this is amazing and I'm actually going to duplicate this hand because I have another one to work later so let's duplicate it I think this looks pretty good another one like this It gets super expressive really quickly. I love that. If you're actually model modeling hands like from scratch, it's pretty tough to get all of this working quickly. It's gonna take a while to do so. Actually, it's it can be pretty good exercise. Let's try to have a look at it through this perspective so you kind of see the back of the hand it's just that that would be flipped this hand would be the other hand this is a lefty we need to have it as a right hand so after I turn this into a mesh I'm gonna go and flip it whoops here we go uh, good references for hands. L let me have a look at my reference folder. References and you see how everybody draws them like this because you need to show claws and yeah that's a very good way to display all of these. Uh, Ruben is saying just try using the rotate option in the deformation panel and it worked. Yes, like the deformation panel seems like it's the key to make sure we can rotate all of these z-spheres because that's what the hand is made of. It's all z-spheres. So pretty good. Thanks, man. Uh, where is the hand that I want to see? Here we go. So I want this to be very stiff. You know, it looks like there's a lot of, uh, it's tense, very tense, a lot of tension going through the fingers. So I'm going to try to replicate this sort of effect. And there's another hand. I think this is a hand of a diseased man. And it's pretty crazy. Like, it's deformed and there's things like this. I'm probably going to deform my hand as well at some point. And if there is any resemblance that we can bring to an actual wolf pawn, because this creature that we're making it's more like it has hands when it comes to the arms but it has more dog or wolf like pawns when it's the back leg so we need to br just merge these things oh, I'll just stick to human hands for now so good I think maybe we can rotate this a little bit more very stiff whoops this one went a bit wonky just gotta be careful make sure you keep rotating while you see it it looks very bony and very angry so maybe now it's time to deform it a little bit look how cool this is when you grab a bone it's pretty amazing So like this This makes it a bit more stiff as well. This is a bit too much. I think we're good. We think we're good as a basis and I am not going to lose this. Just so if we place this thing on the right place and it doesn't look right, we'll just go and make sure we make it look like it's better and we didn't lose the way the hand works. 
So this hand is going to be the lefty. Maybe you can even stretch it, like you can go to scale and try to scale this a little bit more so you get longer claws. It's pretty long already, but maybe a bit more. Go. Because, you know, like these beasts, werewolves and such, one thing that makes this blend between human hands and actual uh, wolves or dogs is that you get this part really stretched. You know, there's this movie, the, the American Werewolf in London, and there's this scene, like Rick Baker made the design on this, and you just start to have that really weird stretching uh, hand scene where he's transforming. It's pretty amazing. Maybe you can bring this here a little bit. So I'm going to try to move these outwards a little bit more. Not like this. I don't know why this one works. Whoops, it didn't work anymore. I have to click exactly at the Z-sphere. So here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. It's a little bit more lengthy. I think this makes sense a bit more. Now we need to fix these fingers a little bit more. So we go back to rotate again. Let's go this way, fix it here, here. Keep rotating your model. It's the only way to make sure it's working. Maybe this could be a bit more lengthy. So I'm going to go and move. And of course, nice nails and claws are going to come off these. I already duplicated this hand before, but now we changed many things about it. So what I am going to do is to actually delete the original one. You see how much it changed? Because I want to make sure I keep proportions right between them. So I'm going to delete this hand and I am going to duplicate the other one again. <sighs> nice. Now, let me go here and use the deformation tab. Here we go. Thanks for the tip, guys. So we're going to be using the deformation tab and actually move this aside a little bit. About here. And now this hand will be the second one. All of this time, we were working on this hand right here so and now it's time for us to think about this one and this hand here it's a bit more tricky than this because now it's easy to have nice gesture on this one but it's a bit trickier to have good gesture on this because we want this hand to sit flat like you know I don't I can't show a lot of the table here but if you look at my hand I want it to be like this you know so it shows struggle and it's there grasping it's something like this so that's what we're trying to get with that hand here we go no nope. first things first I need to rotate it so I'm gonna go back to my sub tool and I'll rotate it like this because the way the arm connects with the hand is a lot different than this one. So they're going to be synced. But there's a bit of a difference here. Because when we do this thing, look how my wrist goes higher than my hand. So that's what's going to happen here. And now we need to change a few things regarding this because it's flat on the floor remember uh, to, to help us think about the floor let me hide the other hand we could come here to append and just append a plane 
There's the plane, 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 plane. So having a plane here will be helpful in a sense that we'll have a better idea of how fingers connect to the floor. So I'm going to rotate it this way, holding shift. Whoops, where did I go? Oh, here you go. I'm also going to go there under display properties and we will turn on double. So I see back face and front face the same way. And let me move this guy around here. I looks like I messed up with the rotation. Let me fix this double sided before I actually go to rotate it. Now, same thing again. Hold shift on rotation. Or I could go to deformation. Okay, deformation is the thing for this video. We're always going to deformation. Who said that again? I think it was Rashid, wasn't it? No, it was Ruben. Both of you guys. So let's go to deformation and rotate. Not on the Z axis. That's going to be on Y. Awesome. So I'm going to set it to 90. ZBrush is very sensitive on this. I wish we had better snapping here. So we're just trying to find something that's about it. And after that, I need to rotate on X. And it changed again. Not X. It said yes. Please. Here we go. Let's move that. So now we can start working on the hand a lot better because we have a proper ground to interact with. Scale that up. Move. And let's get back to the hand. So yeah, let's move a few few things. I want to move this down. Actually, it moves upwards like this, but I need to move these guys down. So let me move it down like this, down like this, down like this. And it's already looking pretty distressed <laughs> and wonky. So this, what happens to this part when you get there? I think it comes sideways, yeah. So let's rotate it this way, this way, this way. I am trying to uh, use the move tool on these parts instead of clicking the Z spheres because it still retains the proportions. So it's good stuff. Here we go, move this again. Now we're back to rotate. Thank God we have this hand in ZBrush. Rotate it outwards, inwards, and outwards again. Outwards, outwards. Remember, there will be a claw at the end of this. We need to think of it. Here we go. More like this. This. getting there we are getting there I'm not sure about the thumb I keep looking at mine I think it simply won't rest like this it's gonna this part here will never rest on the table uh, I mean on the floor so let's just bring it this way and this way but it's gonna be resting sideways like this. Now if I have a quick look at the hand it looks legit like it looks like it could be there there's a lot of tension on the hand I think it's fine. One cool thing that we can play with is the undo if 
from ZBrush that you can see where you were and where you got to and it looks legit so this sub tool is pretty much only hands and I'm trying to pose them so I'll go to save and I'll save this as well the name is fine mannequin hand or one and let me turn on air conditioning because it's pretty hot in here All right, we have two hands. Now let's see what we can do. I think just for the moment, I'll turn these into meshes and I'll play with them and see how they behave with the werewolf shape because if they're fine, they're good to go. That's all I need to go and keep actually rendering my hand give it detail making sure you know you have all of the little things you can have like the tendons that are gonna play a big part on it cool so I saved this file I am going to dynamesh it so let's go to geometry dynamesh and it's not working why it's not working oh it's not working because it's not adaptive skin it's not this thing here it's only Z spheres at the moment so I won't be able to turn it into a mesh so what I need to do is hit a so I turn on adaptive skin and go to geometry and dynamesh so now we have a proper mesh to work with I'll do the same thing with the other hand so alt click this hand uh, a so I turn on adaptive skin dynamesh so it's dynamesh good stuff so now I have these two hands and they are pretty cool I'm gonna change them into a poly polymesh 3d so that's one and that's another go back to my original werewolf not the original but the one that we were working on turn on my plane again and we're back we're back to our model that we were fixing remember so let's go and append our hands make sure they're working fine that's gonna change our model a lot and like I said it's always from the biggest problems that we need to work to the smallest problems let's append uh, this is hand number one and it's massive and let's append and this is hand number two and it's insanely massive so in order to scale these to a nice proportion I don't want to work on separate sub tools because I'll work I'll scale this hand to a size and I'll scale this hand to another size I'll never be sure if they are properly you know if they have the exact uh, correlation between them so as I know I'm gonna come here to this thing and that's funny because I just hit shift F and you can get to see the polygroups that were there from the polyspheres we won't need that so control W is gonna change all of this into a single polygroup I'll do the same to this other one control W so it's another single polygroup and I'm gonna go and merge down so these two guys are a single sub tool now and I can scale and split them as I wish without a lot of problems uh, shift F so I lose my selection I think about this size is good Let's hit R so I rotate them W so I move it and now let's split these guys so uh, sub two split group split bang done I'm gonna start playing with these guys now and move them on the right place if you think like this takes a long time and look there are so many steps just to get this accomplished man you're lucky that you know why because you're not modeling hands if you were modeling hands this would be like 10 times the time that I'm taking now 
So it's in a nice place. Uh, I'm gonna hide this tub here just for the sake of it so you can see it properly. But it looks like it starts to work straight away as soon as you get it here. It's pretty cool. Same thing to the other one. And remember what I said? This hand worked straight away because it's a lefty. So left hand. We need to change this guy to a right hand. So let's get here and let's flip this dude. How do we flip it? Uh, there, are, there are many ways to do so. I think I'll use deformation just because deformation is the panel of the day. So let's go here and size. Nope. Maybe size, because I don't think I can go negative. Of course, Y is not the direction I want. It's not X, it's Z. ZBrush is wonky. Okay, so it's going to be Z, but I need to set this to minus 100, and look what it does. That simply does not work because of one reason. Uh, Deformation works in a way that it's going to be applying deformation to something that's way bigger around the scene. I don't know where the center of this is. So that's why this is happening and I won't be able to get away with it. Instead of that, I could mirror and that would do a better job, I guess. So let's mirror mirror the wrong direction. We need to mirror on Z. Bum. Done. Not a lot of trouble. Deformation didn't save the day. Now let's rotate and paste it in place. Bring it here. Rotate it. Oops. I want to rotate it this way. And I also want to rotate it this way. Ah, look. We're getting that nice shape that we were thinking of before. I wish we could do what we're doing here, still having these uh, Z spheres editable. You know, it would be a lot better because I, I would be able to get to this point with the Z spheres and still keep tweaking them. I could with deformation, and it would be a long time for me to make it fit in the right place. But yeah, I think that's a okay solution. It, it all comes down to planning because I could come here and draw what I wanted. I could think of how it was. So that made me overcome a problem. If I was to do what I did with the hands without planning, that wouldn't look so good. I would have a lot of trouble. All right, so let's rotate this guy outwards just a little bit, not much. And I know this is not matching here anymore, but I can fix that. Rotate it like this. And I think this is cool. So I'm going to hide this stub the same way I did with the other. And now we can have just a quick look at something about the angle that we'll be seeing this guy afterwards. And we see that the hands are working. This one is doing a good job. It's nice because I know it's struggling. Maybe I could bring this nail here to the floor. So it's like he's got all the nails really just scratching the floor. And let me move this, oops, move this a little bit more. I think my move tool got something really weird going on. I'm not sure what's happening. You see, it's kind of like having that little uh, you know, snappy feel. Not sure about this. Sometimes that happens to me, and I just close the brush and open it, open it up again, and it works. Let me see if masking, auto masking, is doing something weird. Ah, uh, no, nah, nah, it should be working. So I'm just bringing this this higher, so I can merge it to this arm. And so we bring this arm a little bit a bit higher and it works. 
Jesus Christ. It's not really working. The the move weirdness is not doing me any favors. So I already saved these hands, so the hands are not going to be a problem. I'm going to save this again because the hands that I worked on are already there. And that's going to be wolf reshaped 20. So Ref, why do you save so many files? That's good. Like from production point of view, you never know when you're going to get a crash while you're saving. It's, you know, it's not very common. It can happen. But when it happens, when you have a crash, when you're saving, you're doomed. That's going to be a big deal because you're going to lose all of the effort. You're going to lose the file. So I always save incremental files. That's going to be way better. And afterwards, of course, you can clean up and delete all of that when you're safe. All right. So I saved this. It's all there. I don't need the hands. This other file, it's the merged version. Let's take a leap of faith and close ZBrush. I think Maricato just sent me a message saying you can reset your brushes. Maybe this would do the, the job. I don't know. Next time I'll try. So open ZBrush again. Here we go. Load to hunted CG ZBrush reshape 20. Oh, there. Sweet. Let's bring the other shader again. It looks like we're doing good. So let me see if my move tool is behaving normally again. Please do. Move. Here we go. So I'm going to move this. Yeah, now it's doing fine. It's working. Bring it this way. And of course, I'm not merging it yet. So I'm not going to worry about these errors. Maybe I'll worry about this little one here. Yeah, better. Let me keep looking. The cool thing about this is that if you feel like having a look at it from the exact same angle that we were looking at when we were in Cinema 4D, where it is, not this one, this was the file that we used to export it. Uh, this is an, yeah, this angle. We can always bring it in and have a look of how hands are behaving properly. I'm, I'm kind of confident that's working, so I'm gonna wait until we have a bigger, uh, you know, like, a bigger a newer iteration where we have more things fixed before I actually get back here again but that's a common thing like going back and forth between applications it's really good to get the most out of each of these software so don't hesitate on doing that all right hands are in place what else what else hands legs I think we can start working here Maybe you can start getting the foot to look me, and I think you can make it look bigger. Same thing is true for the front one and the back one. Yeah, I'm just having a quick look just to realize if that's the key. Yeah, I think it can change the ears as well. That's another feedback Kawe gave me. Uh, there is one wolf. That's pretty much the devil. This one, like this, looks a lot like they used it as a reference from that. Uh, you know, the guy that m made the Wolverine movie playing. What was it? Uh, Van Helsing. Yeah, so you remember when Van Helsing, the, the guy actually becomes a werewolf and he becomes this big black werewolf that's very, very creepy. And it's amazing, like that was one of the coolest werewolves I've seen. And it's kind of bulky and, and hero-like, but it resembles a lot of this guy. And you see how the ears are really high at the top of the head. 
that makes it look very creepy so I think I'm gonna get this inside my design as well and there's one this is not the devil the devil is where is it this guy this is scary I think it's one of the most scary wolves that I have as a reference and I think I'll go and, and target this as a reference because it's pretty good you have something like the ears at the top of the head and they're like you know they're bent outwards and I'll try I'll try to get this into my design so it's probably gonna be something in between having them arched back and this super good reference let's go and start working on the ears click it here I can let me see yeah this is a single piece and I'm gonna come here to my body group auto group again and merge similar so I think these are just ah, they've been edited so merge similar is not gonna work here what I need to do then is just hold control I'm gonna go for my transpose control shift click it and let's work on this guy like we can just move it outwards a little bit and that's gonna be like that wolf that we're looking at same thing goes for the other one so pivot pivot and click the center one so we rotate along these lines that's cool maybe we could bend it a bit higher like this nice yeah this is better that's insane how it changes it cool I think that's gonna look even better when we actually have fur over this guy doing fur on this thing it's gonna be amazing like I'm really keen there's it's been a while since I worked with fur and this is going to be great great practice and we'll be able to talk a lot about things like you know having the clumps and all of the grooming I want this guy to be bleeding so we can see this so we're gonna be working on styling fur to make it look like it's being soaked on blood let's do this the next part is here the foot let's make it bigger to start with so I am going to mask this thing mask it here invert my selection and actually get to scale that so pivot here pivot here scale that up that's good uh, I'm definitely going a bit wonky and piercing the floor so let's go for rotate and rotate it a little bit this is good for two reasons of course I'm removing it from the floor but that's gonna give me room to get my fingers or my pawn or whatever this werewolf has to have that tension again you know the same tension that we have with the hands I'm gonna try to capture that with the feet and this is already getting a little bit of it in there this is really messy we need to fix this let me go to inflate inflate is my favorite brush in Z brush it's amazing and now let's try to change the, the, the shapes here to make it look like it has more tension attached to it uh, one thing that can help here is to actually use move topological just because move topological is going to remain uh, editing just the fingers it's not gonna change the center shape only the outward ones so it's always good to block from this point of view you know you can keep changing things with, without messing with the shapes that you already have set in place so you either go and choose move topological or holding your move brush go to brush uh, auto masking and click topological that's gonna do the same thing bend it maybe 
and now it's time to look for some reference. And why am I being stubborn and working without reference? Uh, that's good. Bring this closer here. That's good. Bring this little guy here. Here. Move this outwards. Move this inwards. And I think now it's time to look at references because I don't know what's happening there. So let's have a look from the camera point of view or so. Let's tuck that in again. How does the pawn behave? Great reference. Uh, well, straight away I see that I've got something there that's not working a lot like this. So I probably need to go this way and then arch back in. And the, the relationship between them, it's very different. The two fingers, I call it fingers, but it's probably wrong. Uh, so these two have about the same size and these two they have way smaller sizes so have a look at this that's something that I am messing up so always keep observing what you're messing up and you never know until you look that's the thing look all of them they kinda have the same size I can improve this a lot so I'm gonna come here to my sub tool toggle that off and keep fixing this and of course it's not only the matter of relationship they're all a bit deformed I can work on this the first one I'm gonna go solo this guy comes here 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 nice so this is starting to look a little bit more natural. I think this could come this way. Let's have a look again. So yeah, that's the back one. You see like the tension you have here. This pawn, this tension is being represented here. Oops, a little bit of smooth here. This will probably go flatter on the floor. I'm not gonna go way too crazy. Uh, maybe this could go flatter, flatter, flatter. The tension is here. Let's arch these a little bit more. And you see how rounded they are? Like at the very tip, they're all very rounded. I don't think I want to keep that because look at this every time you have the finger that in the end they are rounded at the bottom but they have this 45 angle cut here and this really represents what we need to have here so let's just whoops let's push it inwards no this yeah it's something a bit like this but here I'm messing up the way I'm doing it is not too good we can do this in a better way in order to do so uh, let's use oh this one you see like how wrong the angle was this is the right angle goes down like this and cuts 45 degree goes down like this cut 45 degree tension goes outwards push it in I said that I was doing to treat this differently and I'm still using move tool that's the thing I said like it, it's a very good tool you can get away <laughs> doing so much I think what we can do here at this point is probably use 
a you know polish brush or something maybe flatten let's flatten that out flatten that out and you're gonna start having this sort of aspect but there's still a bit of moving to do and inflate it's always gonna be your friend well you get the idea so we made some progress here we made some progress on the foot we made progress on the hands we fixed uh, lots of bad issues that we had from posing it roughly in cinema 4d so it was all weird and now we're closer to what we need to have at the end of the day so I hope you enjoyed the session that was pretty good uh, it was really great fun thank you guys for giving me advice on deformation tool definitely that would have saved me some time and I'll keep working on this so we have nice material to provide to you guys on Unhide when it's all good to go. Okay, thank you so much for watching and see you on the next tutorial.